I'm worried about Will. Ever since he went to that hypnotist to unlock secrets from his past lives, he just hasn't been himself. I mean, technically he's been a bunch of his former selves. Well, it's just so extreme. Don't you think that's so extreme just to go to all that trouble to unlock fitness secrets from the past? Hey, honey. Can I get you a coffee? No, it's okay. I just need my slim fast. Thank you, though. Okay, I'm officially concerned. Well, he has made some pretty big gains. What's going on guys? Will here. Welcome to the video. Health and fitness is like the Kama Sutra. There's tons of strategies to get the job done, but sometimes the most appealing methods are just creative ways to cause a lot of damage. Luckily, in this day and age, we kind of know what works and what doesn't, but that was not always the case. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking my body and my stomach through a journey of time that's all about fat loss to see what crazy things people did to shed the pounds. Now, smoking was one of those things I tried in high school to be cool. It didn't work, though I gained popularity satisfying a different kind of oral fixation. Wait, wait, what are you doing? What? Smoking? Yeah, it's for a video. I don't care what it's for, and there's no smoking. In the 1920s, or shall I say the roaring 20s, smoking was huge and it was used for weight loss due to nicotine's appetite suppressing effects. Companies caught onto this trend and actually started marketing the products as weight loss management tools rather than it can kill you. For example, there's this company that was called Lucky Strike and they actually promoted a diet where you smoke instead of eat and they actually released an ad in 1928 and you will see they pretty much glorify smoking. It says, to keep a slender figure at the very top in bold, reach for a lucky instead of a sweet, which is completely disgusting. And now look at our packaging. It's, it's definitely like a do not do this. Like you only smoke. It's only, the only cool time to smoke is after sex. Though I can't light it because it's soaked in all my tears. Grapefruit, like other things, it's an acquired taste and the pinker, the better. I never eat this fruit, but I do love to explore the pink depths of it. So back in the 1930s, the grapefruit diet was a huge thing, also known as the 18 day diet. They did not unfortunately know of its 365 day applications just yet. So essentially you would have a grapefruit with every single meal. Calories were restricted to around 500 to 800, depending on your size. And the belief was that there was fat burning enzymes within the grapefruit. So the fat burning powers of citrus have been debunked, but that does not take away from its other off-label uses that help get rid of other loads. But this looks like a beautiful grapefruit. Not a lot of white, the most ideal for eating. I feel like grapefruit is a very underrated fruit. A lot of people don't like it. Moving on up in time to the 1940s, we have ourselves the cayenne cocktail, also known as the master cleanse. It kind of looks like a the recovery elixir the Shaolin monks gave me when they found me naked in the mountains. But this is essentially a minimum 10 day restrictive diet where you're restricted to just this cocktail of lemon juice, water, maple syrup, and cayenne pepper. It's supposed to detoxify the liver and of course shed a ton of pounds. You could probably get a more balanced diet on a deserted island and this is probably not the time to be replacing it with Walden Farms. And you can have it cold, warm or hot if you want to. Give it a little taste test. It's probably gonna be really sweet. There's two tablespoons of syrup in here. I do not know how you survive 10 days on this. It's pretty spicy, but fun fact, this drink actually resurfaced back in the early 2000s when Beyonce apparently used it for her movie Dreamgirls in 2006, where she lost 20 pounds in two weeks. So, I mean, in my opinion, as evidenced by Katie, my dream girl knows her way around a donut. The last decade that we are gonna be talking about in this meal, I guess you could say, is the cabbage soup diet. It was a craze in the 1950s, and it was believed if you had this soup, you'd lose weight within weeks. And the last time I was that naive, I was on the casting couch being interviewed by Dave. All that hard work for absolutely nothing. So essentially, you'd have three to four bowls of soup every single day. 
uh, obviously due to the lack of protein and just nutrients in general, people got really dizzy, passed out. And I don't think we needed studies to know this, but studies show that all the weight that people lost was mainly water weight, not fat. So it just made people a little bit more buoyant. So I love a good soup. I always have one hot and ready every Sunday morning. Gotta take whatever recovery I can get. It's not bad. So most of these soups were homemade. If you season it up, it's not half bad. So essentially the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s, and the 1950s was the starfish equivalent of dieting. Because you notice how I did not mention anything about fitness, no working out, that is because it was not required. So this is all just about being lazy, a quick fix. And when it's a quick fix, it's not sustainable. So to keep on theme with all like the diet fads, we're gonna be following one of the biggest fitness fads in the 1990s, which is called Tai Bo, created by a Taekwondo practitioner, Billy Blank. So it's essentially a combination of Taekwondo, dancing and boxing. It's a home workout. So I pulled one up on YouTube right here. And usually I don't find home workouts to elicit quite that much of a hypertrophic response, but it does help other things grow. So uh, typically people would burn around 500, 800 calories within the hour, which sounds pretty good. So we're gonna give it a shot for 22 minutes and 19 seconds and see what it's all about. Hi, I'm Billy Blaze coming to you with a brand new workout. It's called Taibo Body Shape. Today we're gonna work on shaping that body up with the weights. Yeah, a lot of people here. A lot of people. Okay, you guys ready? Luckily, there's not much weights involved for this workout because based off my breakfast, I would probably have been pinned by just the 45 pound bar. So people are usually using anywhere from three to eight pound weights. And a lot of people actually got hurt doing these workouts. So fun little fact there, not so fun for the people who actually got hurt, but a lot of people got hurt. Rise up by seven, rise up, two, you go. One, pull it back to your hip, all the way back to the hip. I'm assuming by the rep speed, this is how people were getting hurt because there's no such thing as an eccentric rep in this workout. Oh my God, the shoulder burn. It's just non-stop. Okay, well that was a little bit harder than I thought. Definitely do not recommend doing that with your grandmother or your grandfather because they will blow their back out, they will completely destroy their shoulders, all that good stuff. But uh, this is not enough. If you were looking to get in shape, tone up, workouts like this, you know, home workouts are great, doing some cardio, getting the body moving is awesome, but you need to lift weights, you gotta lift some heavy weights. So since we just worked out, by default, you gotta have a post-workout shake. Slim Fast hit its peak popularity in the 1980s, coming in flavors like strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. So pretty much the diet was set up like it's shown on the package here. You would replace two meals with a shake and have one sensible meal, which is around 500 calories. And then you'd have three snacks spaced out between those meals that was around 100 calories. So we're gonna make a shake right now. So you're supposed to be having it with some low fat milk. So I don't think they had nut milk back then. So here is some bag milk. Yes, it's bag milk. So with eight ounces, Gonna add that in. So I'm assuming their motto was slim fast and rebound harder because again, this is not a sustainable diet. So we're gonna go in with a, a scoop. So it's 190 calories with the milk. So I don't know how that's a, a meal replacement unless you're an anemic guinea pig. And now when I'm on a diet, I would have the urge, especially only having two of these a day, to put literally two pounds of ice in here. Just in case. Don't you hate it when you're making a milkshake and the boys just show up in your yard? Warm it up. Okay, it looks like it should be good. So it's a way thicker than I thought it was gonna be. It's almost like anabolic ice cream minus the xanthan gum. But I probably need another white powder to get me through this diet, so here we go. It tastes like sweet dirt. Oh. The one thing that would save me on this diet would be that sensible dinner that would probably not be very sensible by the end of the day. 
Daniel Abraham uh, created SlimFast in 1976. In 1984, he reported earnings of 197 million. In 1990, it reached 23 million people within that year. And guess this, in 2000, he sold SlimFast for guess how much? $2.3 billion in cash. Where the heck would you even fit that? I don't even know. But, you know, this diet, just like all of the others today, is not sustainable and your cellulite will just have deja vu. The fad diet we are exploring now is of more recent times. In 2010, the baby food diet took storm. Do you remember that one? No, the last time baby food was like 1994. And I really? Well, for you. When you I swear I was always a, a more of a milk baby. No, I, I, I vividly remember not liking this. Well, there were certain ones that you really liked, and there were certain ones that were not going down no matter what. Yeah, that was yeah. a milk boy, wasn't I? Yeah. Okay. I had you on tap since 94. On tap. Yeah. That's right. There was no getting out of that. Once I latched, you could detach, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Um, the baby food diet, uh, again, like in 2010, you would be replacing your meals with baby food. Your actual meals you'd be replacing with five jars as baby food jars range from 20 to 100 calories, and then your snacks around two jars, and then you would have a normal dinner. Oh. So big proponents of this was actually Jennifer Aniston. She used this diet for her roles. She lost seven pounds in a week for that movie, Just Go With It. Wow, and she looked great. Yeah, she did. So what do we got? We got pumpkin and chickpea, beef and beef and broth. Okay, that's gonna be nice. And then we got this like kind of nice fruit medley. Well, that would be nice. That might be nice, yeah. 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 Was I a fussy baby or was I always a human Do you know what? Monster? I keep putting it in your mouth and if you didn't like it, it just came right back out. Did it? Yeah. Okay, so for you babies out there wondering, we're having the pumpkin chickpea, calories and macros, we're looking at 45 calories with a jar, 0.5 fat, pretty good, uh, three grams of protein, and the carbohydrates is nine grams, two grams of fiber out there. If you have trouble going to the washroom, so I'll let you go first. So do you think this is gonna be kind of like hummus? Like you could just get some crackers? I highly doubt it. And one of the main reasons why the baby food diet was so good is that it was so bland, it turned people off wanting to eat. Some penitentiary vibes. So this is for the, the, the babies during pumpkin spice season. So basics okay. are not more on their bread. Brittany with an eye, there's a chance. Mm. You like that? Oh, you know what? That tastes like it's straight from the pumpkin patch. You know what? It is missing so many ingredients to make that taste good. But you know what? Oh. It's not, you're not adverse. I feel like being a baby is purely about survival until you can think and speak for yourself. Because like, you have no choice what you put in your mouth. Oh no, you had all kinds of choice. Because it, I? I, like I just said, it just comes right back I still don't. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the, the one I'm most afraid of. I believe you are too. Yes. Beef and broth. And funny enough, you think beef and broth, the only thing in it is beef and broth, but no. It is actually, there's rice in there as the first ingredient. So you gotta trick those keto babies. Mm. Calories is 150. For that jar? For that jar, yeah. Six grams of fat, protein is 14, and the carbohydrates is five. It's like, kind of shocking that a baby would need 14 grams of protein. One gram per pound. It gives like a, a canine whiff, a canine cuisine. Okay, protein. that does smell like dog food. Oh, I didn't know beef could be sour. Oh, do not feed that to your child. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. They do not have a choice. I'm sorry that I, I gave know. you that. <laughs> Why do you got kept on going for the milk? Oh. oh. That is not Damn, good. yo. No. You want us to move on to yeah. better territory, which yeah. is gonna be the fruit medley. Okay. And you see how there's no cantaloupe and no melon because those are the worst fruits on the planet. So we got some apple, Agreed. mango, apricot, and some banana, 90 calories for the jar. 0.2 fat, one gram of protein, and 22 grams of carbs. Funny enough, the banana is not taking the forefront. Yeah, yeah. which normally, yeah. if there's a banana in anything, that's it's all definitely, you want. It's definitely like apricot heavy. Yes. You get that? Yes. It tastes like a a very budget friendly pre-packaged smoothie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't very... feel like that's gonna get you very far on the longevity of keeping your hunger down. Yeah, okay. so I'm sorry you babies out there. That was the baby food taste test. It extremely disappointed me, but uh, thank you for doing this. And, You're uh, welcome. I kind of hate you for giving me this. <laughs> Replacing calorie counting with points, Weight Watchers was developed in 1963 and still has a major relevance today. Investors like Oprah Winfrey said she's gonna be counting points for the rest of her life. And it actually won the best weight loss program in 2015. So I'm heading out for lunch right now and we're gonna have lunch the Weight Watchers way. 
members on Weight Watchers are usually assigned 30 points per day that they can use pretty much however they want to, and there's some zero point foods. And zero point foods include fruits, non-starchy vegetables, eggs, chicken breast, turkey breast, fish, shellfish, beans, legumes, tofu, tempeh, and not fat plain Greek yogurt. So you can eat as much of those as you possibly want. I mean, they say that you can't overeat it, but I could beg to disagree right there. Um, obviously, like if peanut butter, ice cream, those are higher point foods. So we're at an Asian restaurant right now, and when you want to go out to eat, it says, especially in an Asian restaurant, uh, consider using chopsticks. It makes you eat slower. Uh, it says to try sharing your food. I'm not sharing with you, Kofi. No, that's a yeah, terrible we're not, idea. We're not sharing at all. Yeah. It says avoid some uh, carbs and just go with like meat and vegetables. And if you can, try to limit the sauce. Um, can I do a chicken teriyaki? Chicken teriyaki lunch pineapple. Uh, no. Dinner? Just the dinner, yeah. Dinner? With no, no rice. No rice, okay. Um, can I do no teriyaki sauce or it on the side? Okay, teriyaki sauce on the side, okay. Yeah, and then is there any other way I can remove flavor? I'm gonna try using chopsticks today. I know you just brought these by default. Oh, it's too much, but it's good. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay. I might be here a while though. So we got our chicken teriyaki. Absent of any sauce, we have our sauce on the side. Much, much longer than normal later, and I think these things work because instead of only wanting two more now, I only want one more. Who would have thought? Eat slow. Digest your food. Wow. So if you thought people were lazy with their diets, that was just the beginning. So we got a bunch of different gadgets today that we are gonna try out that were fitness fads back in the day. So the first one we were looking at is from the 1960s, which is the vibrating belt. And literally, my Amazon description of this thing says that it will destruct fat, like completely destroy it. I think my next belt will need to be a chastity one, with the way this is feeling. This is about as lazy and effective as like an online pregnancy test. Okay, so I've been doing this belt for like eight minutes or so and pretty much nothing. So we're gonna turn this bad boy off. <laughs> Biggest waste of $118 I've ever had in my entire life. So I would not recommend it. It's not gonna melt the fat. The next gadget we're looking at is the Thigh Master from the 1990s. All of our moms had these after they had us. So I'm gonna try a workout on the screen and see what this thing can do. Begin by holding the Thigh Master Gold straight out in front of you, slowly and partially flexing the coil to the point where you begin to feel a little resistance. Place one hand over each handle to hold the exerciser in place. This is the effective exercise which has made the Thigh Master Gold one of the most successful exercise products of all time. Place the palms of both hands on the upper handle and press down. It's like a warm up to write a math test. Okay, you know what? We're done. This is pretty much like a glorified stress ball. I, I know I say any sort of exercise is good, but like this is pretty much a waste of time. Like there was like no resistance. I don't understand the hype of this thing. So this and the belt, I don't recommend. Just do the basics in the gym and that is your best bet. The 1990s was the anti-carb movement. People started seeing carbs like they were a source of like demonic possession or something like that. And then the Atkins diet came around and started to convince people that carbs were bad. And people started labeling carbs as good and bad. Even if some of the carbs that people started to label as bad were actually good. I know that sounds very confusing. Like people were avoiding things like oatmeal, brown rice, a bunch of other great complex carbs because they were told that and they're missing out on a bunch of the nutrients in the whole grain. So for dinner tonight, we're having a very, very low carb microwave dinner because they were very popular in the 90s and I'm sure it's gonna taste extremely mediocre. So it's only 210 calories for the entire entree, 
10 grams of fat, 19 grams of protein, and only nine grams of carbs, five of which are fiber. Very, very low, but to put things into perspective for you all, on the Atkins diet, the first two weeks, you're only allowed to have 20 grams of carbs per day in total. So, you know, that is very, very low. And I don't even like to use the word allowed on a diet. You should be able to have whatever you want and just make it fit within your calories. And, you know, frozen meals remind me of that one Tinder date of mine. It looks great in the picture. And then once you see it in real life, up close and personal, you kind of, you know, you notice the unibrow, the um, crooked nose, the lazy eye, and the Never mind, but even just looking at this uh, over the film here, this is probably gonna be the reason why I drink tonight, but we are gonna see how this thing tastes. But on the bright side, you know, the ingredients, it's like a hallmark of ingredients for bodybuilders. You got the chicken for the protein, the cauliflower rice for the, you know, volume, a bunch of other vegetables, and you got some sauce for the marinara sauce for the lube. So let's see what we're working with here. Not expecting much with 210 calories for a power bowl. Maybe a power bowl to get me to my bed to go to sleep. It tastes healthy. I'm gonna put it to you that way. Hmm. And you know, just looking at this packaging, on the back it says each ingredient matters and makes small swaps, like swapping rice for cauliflower rice. So that's kind of making it seem like rice is bad for you, and that's not the case. All it is is just lowering the calories and making a little bit more volume. But that's not that doesn't mean that you can't eat rice. So if you like rice and you're dieting, Make it fit. It's just gonna be a little bit harder than, you know, if you're gonna use cauliflower rice. But no food should be off limits. Dinner is done, and I wish I had another couple of decades of meals to fill up on. Maybe I can go into the, the future where they eat party sized pizza to lose weight. I don't know. But I definitely have to power through this power bowl. Uh, but I'm gonna wrap up the video here. A diet is all about making small adjustments, and most importantly, enjoying the process. If you don't enjoy it, you're not gonna stick with it. And if it's not sustainable, once you lose all that weight, you're not gonna be able to keep it off. So all this stuff I showed you guys today is absolutely nonsense. Don't try it. A quick fix sounds amazing, but you know, it's not gonna be a quick fix for very long. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.